Hello, my name is BJ Paris. Welcome to Tapping Into His Treasures. It's the end of May in this part of the mid coast in Maine, and the weather's been delightful. Picture perfect. No bugs, but I went up the coast a couple of nights ago, and those mayflies, black flies, I think you call them too, they came right at my girlfriend and I, and uh, all the other people at the church concert. Unbelievable. So I'm trying to soak up as much sun as possible these last few days without the bugs hitting this part of Maine. So our theme today is going to be strongholds. Strongholds on our minds. The dictionary describes strongholds as well-fortified places. A stronghold is a well-fortified place. Separate the word in two, strong and hold, and read strong as an adjective. That way it refers to something that takes a stronghold of your mind in a certain area or areas. Focus on the word strong again. If someone was in danger and you were helping them out, you wouldn't act like a weakling as you were helping them out. You would be forceful and would take a firm grip on the person. Well, that's how it is with Satan when he takes a strong grip of people's minds and emotions. He's out for blood. He's not going to let go. Through life, we get so familiar with his tactics that we more or less say to him, it's okay, if he has a stronghold on us. People just see it as life and are passive about taking their God-given authority over the devil. Well, as Christians, we have the right to bind the devil, to cover our minds and emotions with the blood of Jesus. Christ's blood is the only thing that will break strongholds. Why are Christians so lackadaisical about doing so? We need to put our feet on the head of the serpent and squash the life out of him. We need to be reminded of that too. So if someone has hurt you, we all get hurt. All human beings mess up and wrong words come out of our mouths. In a moment of anger, causing seemingly irreparable pain to the family, member, or friend, we can't allow that one mistake to fashion future relationships amongst family members or friends. Some strongholds are based on jealousy of other men and women. The Bible says that jealousy is as cruel as the grave. Let me tell you from personal experience, next to the death of a loved one, it has to be the thing that causes the most intense pain imaginable. It consumes you. If you have experienced jealousy, I would like, I would like you to, for just a moment, to remember the stronghold that it had on you, just for the sake of realizing Satan's power. Some strongholds have to do with drugs, alcohol, and cigarettes. I heard a young woman on Dr. Phil who said, All I live for is to get high. I love it. That is a stronghold. Nobody could help her except God. Have you ever seen a guy finish one beer and open another within two seconds? He couldn't be without an open bottle of beer. Have you? I have. Or have you ever seen anyone put out one cigarette and instantly light up another? Those people have no confidence no, nothing without a lit cigarette in their hand. Nobody could help those people except God. The strongholds. Have you seen addicts begin to shake when they go a certain length of time without feeding their habit? That is another form of Satan's stronghold on a life. And it's the same with some sex addicts when sex is used. Not as love-making, but as a physical fix. 
They can't even think straight. Their minds are overtaken with lustful thoughts. Their minds are being gripped tightly by the devil. Some areas of strongholds are less severe, but nevertheless damaging. The old-timers who live in Maine, the state where I live, are known for having strong, stubborn nets. Their faces become distorted, and they become tense, and they say things like, Bye, gory! That's all there is to it! And they're not budging. They won't bloody budge one inch for the rest of their life. Of course, this happens everywhere. It just happens to be associated with New Englanders. People who are like that are hurting God, themselves, and many others. You know, as I was studying for the show, I said to God, I don't think that the viewers are going to want to listen to so heavy a subject. Shouldn't they be talking about love and blessings? And God sternly said to me, don't tell them what they want to hear. Tell them what they need to hear. You speak what I tell you to speak. So back to our subject, which I am doing in obedience. And I'm speaking to myself, too. There are hundreds of strongholds which can exist in people's lives. Greed is one of them. Some people are consumed with money and materialism. You can usually pick up on this on your first meeting with them. It can be a stronghold. Lust. Lust for many different things. Some men can't look at a woman without undressing her in his thoughts. Another stronghold is stealing. We've all heard the saying that some people will steal anything that's not nailed down or not chained down. Is it a thrill that they are after or is it something else that causes them to steal? Fear. This is a really common stronghold. People are afraid of other people. They are afraid of change. They are afraid of failure. It can be a stronghold. And here is another. Low self-worth. I've never realized what a stronghold this one could be until I began to study for this lesson. It made me look deep inside of myself and made me evaluate what comes out of my mouth. Because of my disability, I've always had low self-worth. And I didn't realize until I started studying for this lesson that, that was somebody was gripping my mind in this area. That's how sly he is. He like slithers his way in there and you don't even realize. Saturday night, oh yeah, this is, this is another way that God uh, impressed upon my heart about um, uh, low self-worth. I couldn't find it in here. I went to a concert on Saturday night and we met some of the uh, members of the group before they went on stage. They were circulating in the building. And one of the singers had a birth defect. And I mean, it was nice looking and it's all a get out and everything. But um, he did have this very visible birth defect and it was like shocking. And I thought, wow, he's being used to be a part of a group singing and, you know, with the birth defect. What am I so worried about with my disability? And then the first song they sang, I don't know the name of the song. This could have been the name of the song. It, it was repetition. I'm imperfect, but I'm forgiven, something like that. And as they sang it, I thought to myself, I'm imperfect, but I'm forgiven, and God could use me just as much as he uses that man with the birth defects. And as crazy as it sounds, it really helped me out, especially since it came at the same time that I was studying this uh, subject on strongholds in low self-esteem or self-worth.
And so I, with God's help, I overpowered the stronghold that had a grip on me. Lying is another stronghold. Unbelief is another. That one hit me between the eyes, too. Unbelief is being a stronghold. I just never associated the two, so I'm learning. Some strongholds cannot be identified by the persons who have them, but others can see them clearly. I mean, others can see them clearly in the one who can't see them. If a person is like a fuse ready to explode, then you know he has a stronghold. Any one thing could set them off in an instant. Strongholds steal people's joy and peace. For sure, hmm? We must take our thoughts captive. John 8, 32. Strongholds can be conquered, but first we have to recognize them. It is a painful process to admit we are deceived and to deal with the deception and with the strongholds. But God is for you. He will... Oh, I can't read my own writing. I ran out of... I ran out of ink in my ink cartridge, so I had to do everything longhand, and I can't, I couldn't read my writing for a minute. God is for you. He will fight for you and help you to evict your old habits. The new you, <clears throat> with an even temperament, and with a fearless heart and a pure mind, will be so pleasing to you that you won't miss your old ways for a minute. That's what God wants to do for you. You, after obeying God in this, you will be a gift to yourself from God. Amen? Some strongholds are spiritual. Some go out by prayer and fasting. They are defeated by God's armor. His armor on us. In Ephesians 6, 11 to 19, and... I'm looking through my Bible, and I don't know if I can reach it in time. Ephesians 6, 11 to 19, so I guess I'm going to have to tell you from memory. Um, the armor of God being the breastplate of righteousness, which means to cover yourself with God's righteousness, which means simply do things that are right and not wrong with his covering. And the breastplate righteousness, the helmet of salvation, to put on, almost like a physical helmet, like a motorcycle or bicycle helmet, have it cover you. In, not it doesn't only relate to salvation from hell. It means salvation from every thing that throws itself against us. We can be saved from all those things with the armor of God. So let's see, breastplate of righteousness, helmet of salvation, shield of faith. And yes, don't we need that armor of faith to guard us and to lead us and strengthen us? That faith, Jesus' faith, the same faith as His. Breastplate, righteousness, helmet of salvation, shield of faith. Uh, the truth, we have to cover ourselves with the armor of truth and ask for the boldness to spread that truth to others. And all the rest that are listed there, please look it up, Ephesians 6, 11 to 19. There are more there. So the power that comes from putting on the armor according to God's word comes from God alone. Abraham, from the Old Testament, had a nephew named Lot, remember? In the book of Genesis. And you remember the story that Lot's men were fighting with Abraham's men and that wasn't enough territory for the both groups and not enough grazing land for all of their cattle and so on and so forth. So Lot and Abraham separated and Lot went to uh, Sodom and Gomorrah. Well, anyway, to my way of thinking, that his ne Abraham's nephew Lot seems to have had strongholds in his life, if you want to think about his character for a minute. He was in competition with his uncle for prestige. He seemed to have a flair for wealth 
and excitement and for the things of the world. So, just relating that to the uh, theme that we're on about strongholds, maybe that could help you to grasp it a little bit more by using uh, his name. Saul, remember King Saul? He definitely had strongholds. He was out to kill King David. Well, he was out to kill David a little bit earlier than that, before the kingship. And he was consumed with it. Do you remember how terribly consumed he was with it? And I think he even went after him with a javelin or something and just missed him. And he had his men going after him to deliver him to him so that he could kill him. And it went on for a long, long time. Finally, David had to escape. What would that be if it wasn't a stronghold? That was a stronghold from Satan himself. Not just the demons, his underworkers of Satan, but that was Satan himself in that stronghold, I would think, anyway. Terrorists have strongholds. They think they are doing God a favor by killing people. They are dead set against Americans against Western civilization, they want us dead. It's not normal. It's spiritual. It's a stronghold. Millions of strongholds over there. Not in all Muslims or anything like that, but in certain ones it's a stronghold. Satan can't win against God. God is on our side. God is in the, on the side of people who have strongholds, and even Christian people who have strongholds. God has given us the weapon of prayer against the underworld and against strongholds. Imagine yourself as a part of a cavalry ambushing enemy troops. God guarantees you a victory when you go to war against strongholds. So there it is. God is on your side. He's not going to leave you without help. Praise God. Every time someone shares something about God, he or she is put to the test. And the test usually involves the subject he talked about. I am no exception. The same day that I finished writing the show, I went through a terrible test and I had a stronghold. Yep, somebody very dear to me took something that I said the wrong way right when I was in the middle of this lesson. And do you know, I couldn't get it off my mind for five hours. Five hours my mind was kind of paralyzed and I couldn't even function. It was stronghold. What was holding me back from praying and asking God to cover me with the blood of Jesus? What was holding me back? Well, for one thing, I allowed it to happen, and God used it. And I'll tell you how he used it in just a minute. But when it was happening, it was as if someone was on my chest, holding me down. I could feel the weight. And then after five hours, I finally prayed and ask God to cover me with the blood of Jesus and to take away all that was happening in my mind and emotions. And within five minutes, all of the physical and mental pressure was gone. Five, not even five minutes, people. I hope some of you will do the same and be encouraged to do the same with your strongholds. And, the, and uh, another thing that happened just this morning is in the same area it was I was so overwhelmed when I woke up and looked at my schedule. I had a busy week last week and a very busy week this week with uh, hardly any downtime. And I was so overwhelmed I just couldn't deal with it. I was thinking, like many of you think, I can't stretch myself anymore. I just can't. And I just didn't know what to do. And finally, after trying to vow it by myself, I got right down on my knees 
And I said, Lord, take away everything from me that is not of you. And just leave yourself remaining. I don't want anything else on me or in me. Please, God. And I asked for blood covering. I asked for a fresh, fresh motivation, fresh inspiration from him to go on. And again, and within five minutes, I was completely free and released from all that weight and all that uh, negative shroud. I was totally re released. And the Bible does say that we are supposed to go before God every day and to take off the old and to put on the new. We, we do know that. Remember the story of the wineskins that God, Christ uses in illustration? So that's what I did today, and he answered me. And because of these things, these two uh, stories that I just shared with you, uh, it just gave me a chance to go through the same thing that I'm talking about so that I could pray for those of you that do have strongholds and want to be delivered from them. And it just gives me an identification that I may not have had so intensely. So I do, and I do want to pray with you too. So how about if we bow right now just for a prayer? This is the perfect time to pray. Please bow your head with me and pray as we pray for against strongholds. Father, we come before you for all the viewers of this program that may be having strongholds right now and the devil's just gripping them tightly, their minds and emotions in different areas. All these things. Drugs, alcohol, cigarettes, sex. Lying, stealing, cheating, low self-value, all the things that we mentioned today, Lord. We pray that you would deliver, completely deliver many, many people, even hundreds of people from these strongholds this very day. Give a victory over Satan in their lives. And Father, when you do deliver them, and there's empty spaces in their soul, from the deliverances, we pray that you would fill up those empty spaces with more of Jesus Christ, your Son, with more love, with more power, with more grace, with more mercy, with more of Christ's characteristics, Father. Yes, Lord. And we'll continue to pray in just one moment. 